it's Michael. So I have another extremely beautiful problem for you guys today. Um, this one I found on the Art of Problem Solving Forum, and I don't know the source, um, but it's a really nice problem. So um, if you'd like to try to solve it, um, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the solution. Uh, so we have a scalene triangle ABC, uh, where BC is the smallest side. Um, P and Q are points on A, B, and AC, so that B, P, and C, Q are both equal to BC. So like I said, BC is the smallest side, so that makes sense. Um, I is the in-center of, of the triangle ABC, and O is the circumcenter. And we want to show that P, Q is perpendicular to OI. All right. Um, so there's a certain theorem in geometry that can be used to show that points are perpendicular like this. And I find it often, I mean, so in this picture, it's hard to see how P and Q are connected to O and I, but there's a theorem and it says that if we can show that PO squared minus QO squared is PI squared minus QI squared, then that's equivalent to them being perpendicular. So if you haven't seen that theorem before, um, now you know. And I'm going to give a little sort of mini proof of it in the end, but it's not too hard to show that those are equivalent. So if you'd like, you can try to prove it. Um, but in problems where you're trying to show like a line between the ortho center and in center is like, per, or, or, or in general, any sort of line between two centers of circles is perpendicular to another thing, this, this um, theorem often comes in handy. So that's how I'm going to try to show this in the end. So that's one thing I noticed. And then another thing I noticed is that uh, BP and BC are equal and BI is an angle bisector. Uh, then it's easy to see that triangles BIP and BIC have to be congruent. And so, like I said, I wanted to show that PI squared minus QI squared is PO squared minus QO squared, but PI would have to equal IC because triangle PBI and IBC are congruent. Um, so that's sort of my proof strategy here. Um, so, um, and then another thing is, so I figured out kind of how to get PI because like I said, PI is equal to CI, but what about PO? So for PO squared, I'm going to try to use power of a point. So I'm going to start by drawing the circumcircle of ABC. Um, so O is the center of that circle. And if you take the power of P with respect to O, it's equal to AP times PB, but then it's also equal to the radius squared minus PO squared. So that's kind of how I'm gonna to try to get PO. So, so I'm gonna start by writing that. So you have AP times PB is R squared minus PO squared. So this proof is probably gonna be a lot more algebraic than most of the other proofs I've had on my channel. Um, those, the, those have mostly been more geometric using projective geometry or cyclic quadrilaterals or stuff like that, but this one is mostly algebraic. Um, so I guess it's good that I'm kind of mixing it up and uh, doing things a different way because I know a lot of my last videos have used uh, projective geometry. But anyway, so we have AP times PB, that's the power of P with respect to the circumcircle. And that's equal to the radius of the circumcircle squared minus PO squared. Okay. Now, AP times PB, um, all we can do is we can rewrite PB, um, I'm sorry, we can rewrite AP as AB minus PB. Um, so AP is AB minus PB. And kind of the reason I'm doing that is because um, we know that PB is equal to BC, so that seems like it would come in handy. And AB um, seems easier to deal with than AP. Okay, so I have this equation, and now I'm gonna do the same thing with point Q. Um, so AQ times QC, that's the power of Q with respect to the circumcircle, and that's equal to R squared minus QO squared, where R is the circumradius. And again, AQ is equal to AC minus QC. All right, so what do we do with these two equations? So we wanted, 
um, the difference PO squared minus QO squared in the end. We wanted to show that PO squared minus QO squared is PI squared minus QI squared. So we're going to want to subtract these two equations. So we're going to want to subtract these two. Um, but PB and QC are both equal, and they're both equal to BC. So that comes in handy when simplifying this. So if we subtract these two, uh, these PB and QC are both equal to BC. So that um, let's just pull out a BC. And um, so I'm going to just sort of show the algebra here. So um, we're going to take the bottom equation minus the top one. So we get PO squared minus QO squared, and the R squareds cancel. And then these two are equal to BC, so you can factor it out. Um, and then also, these two are both equal. So if you subtract AB minus PB, if you do AC minus QC minus AB minus PB, well, these two cancel, QC and PB, and you're left with just AC minus AB. All right. So this equation looks fairly manageable. We can work with um, BC, AC, and AB. Um, so like I said, we want to show that this is PI squared minus QI squared. Um, so how do we get that? Um, well, what, like I mentioned earlier, um, PI is equal to IC. Um, so eventually we're going to want to show that um, this is equal to IC squared minus IB squared. So the rest of this video is mostly going to be a little bit of algebra, eventually getting this to equal CI squared minus BI squared. So how do we do that? So first I'm going to play around with this a little bit. So AC minus AB. Um, so first note that all the tangents to the in circle from each vertex have to be equal. So AK has to equal AL. BL has to equal BJ, and CJ has to equal CK. Um, and this is going to come in handy when we start simplifying this. So um, AC minus AB, if we break AC and AB up into their components, uh, we have AC minus AB, AC is AK plus KC, and AB is AL plus LB but AK is equal to AL, so those two cancel, and that, this has to be equal to KC minus LB. And KC is equal to CJ, and LB is equal to BJ. So KC minus LB is just CJ minus JB. Okay, so we're gonna wanna try to substitute CJ minus JB into here for AC minus AB. But then BC is equal to CJ plus JB. So that would come in handy um, because we have CJ plus JB times CJ minus JB. So that's a difference of squares. Okay. So when you plug that in, you'd get PO squared minus QO squared is equal to uh, CJ squared minus JB squared. Okay. But we wanted to show that this, like I mentioned earlier, was CI squared minus BI squared. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. We just um, add and subtract IJ squared to this equation. And so that is um, CJ squared plus IJ squared minus JB squared plus IJ squared. And by the Pythagorean theorem, that's uh, that's equal to CI squared minus BI squared, like I said before. Okay. And then, like I said, uh, CI is equal to PI. And that's because, um, like I said, um, triangle PBI is congruent to triangle CBI. So I'm going to write that here. Um, that's true by side angle side. Um, they both share side IB. Um, PB is equal to BC and BI is an angle bisector, so those two angles have to be equal. So CBI is congruent to PBI, and so CI is equal to PI, and by the same logic, BI is equal to QI. And so uh, if we plug that into there, you get PO squared minus QO squared um, is equal to PI squared minus QI squared, and that's exactly what we wanted to show because by the theorem that I mentioned, um, that proves that PQ is perpendicular to OI. 
Um, so some of you may have seen this theorem before. If you can show that these two difference of squares are equal, then it means the two segments have to be perpendicular. If you haven't, I'm going to do a sort of quick demonstration of it. So um, let's say I drop a perpendicular from the line OI onto the line PQ. And let's say I let that perpendicular meet at point D. Um, actually, you know, just first drop the perpendicular from O to the line PQ, because we don't know OI is perpendicular yet. But if you drop the perpendicular from point O, then um, PO squared minus QO squared, well, PO squared is PD squared plus DO squared, and QO squared is QO squared plus OD squared. So when you subtract the two, um, OD squared would cancel, and you'd get that it's just equal to PD minus QD squared. So basically, when you drop the perpendicular from O to the line PQ, um, then you'd by doing that, you'd find that um, PO squared minus QO squared is PD squared minus QD squared. And so if you did the same thing, but with the point I instead, you'd have to get exactly the same point D. Um, this is pretty easy to check, but basically the perpendicular from O to the line PQ has to, um, the foot of the perpendicular has to be exactly the same point as the foot of the perpendicular from I to PQ. And so uh, PQ has to be perpendicular to OI. So I feel like this one may be the hardest problem um, that I've posted so far, although I guess it's kind of up for debate. Um, there are purely geometric proofs that I saw posted in the Art of Problem Solving forum, but they're pretty hard to find. Um, so kind of the reason why I resorted to algebra here um, was because I couldn't find a purely geometric proof. Um, but um, it's, it's a very nice problem. It just got a couple lines in the beginning and um, you get a very non-trivial result. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.